Gaming news from E3, LastPass gets hacked, and some humans are stealing the jobs of robots. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 359 for Monday, June 15th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all of the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to the tech headlines. Popular password manager LastPass revealed today that their site had been compromised. They noted a suspicious activity in their system on Friday, and when they investigated, they saw that LastPass account email addresses, password reminders, server per user salts, and authentic authentication hashes were compromised. A blog post on their site says that the vast majority of users are safe. It would not be a bad idea, though, to change your master LastPass password and to turn on two-factor notification. The E3 gaming conference is going on in Los Angeles today, and that's where Microsoft showed off this amazing demo of Minecraft in Microsoft's forthcoming augmented reality goggles, the Hollow Lens. In this special version of this insanely popular game, you can play Minecraft right on your coffee table or on a wall, then you can move the game to another surface. You can raise the world to see the things that aren't normally visible. No release date as of yet. The only thing we've heard about HoloLens is that it will be available in the Windows 10 timeframe. Not sure what that means. The company says we'll learn more about Minecraft on HoloLens at MineCon in July. We've got more big headlines from the E3 conference in Los Angeles, but first joining us today to talk about some big Apple and Facebook news is Jason Abruzzizi, reporter at Mashable. Welcome, Jason. Hey, thanks a lot. So uh, you're fresh back from a trip to Hawaii. Uh, how does it feel? Did you feel like totally overwhelmed by the tech news or was it nice to get away? Uh, there was a lot while I was away. My editor was uh, was giving me a little bit of a hard time, but it was it was nice to take a little break now and then, but I'm I'm pretty glad to be back. Well, you know, there weren't a lot of like big, you know, scoops except for Apple, except for the stuff about Apple. So like a lot of people wait and don't release things. So it's been a week since Apple announced their new music streaming service that will de debut at the end of this month on Apple devices. Uh, today, the company gave us some numbers about how they'll be sharing the $10 a month subscription payments. Now, according to Peter Kafka at Recode, Apple will pay music owners 71.5% of Apple's music subscription revenue outside the U.S. The numbers will fluctuate, but will average around 73%. Now, executives at labels uh, say that Apple is working with the executives at labels at, that Apple is working with confirmed these figures. Now, this is pretty much the standard, right? Yeah, this sounds pretty close. There, there's some uh, conjecture about they might be paying a little bit more than Spotify, but this is this is just about in line with uh, what the streaming industry has has come to accept. So, do you think, uh, from what you've seen or read about Apple Music, do you think it will make people switch over from Spotify or other services they're using now? That's going to be a tough one. I think it's going to be tough to get people to switch over, especially for people who have used Spotify for a while now. It's one of those services that gets better the more you use it, but also, you know retains you as a customer more the more you use it. You know, your, your playlists are on there, your favorites. You, you know, you build out this kind of relationship with the platform. Uh, that doesn't necessarily translate immediately over to, to Apple Music. Uh, if you're, a, you know, a big Spotify customer or even RDO or some of the other ones, you know, if you jump to Apple, it's, it's kind of like starting from scratch. Yeah, I mean, I think that lock-in is the thing they're all, you know, looking for to, you know, how, how can they get customers just never leave? So, you know, whatever they throw at them. And I think with music streaming, it's, I mean, no one ever talks about, we'll easily, you know, migrate all your playlists and all your favorites to our new platform. Like, no one ever talks about that. So, I mean, if we switch over, I, I wonder, and I haven't read anything about this, you know, if you were a Beats subscriber, if all of those playlists will stick with you if you, now, if you use Apple Music. Have you read anything about that? I haven't seen too much on that, but it would, it would entirely make sense to try to retain as many of those customers as possible by, you know, bringing over all that kind of information. Um, I, I mean, what Apple has going for more than anything else is just the scale and, and you know, obviously it's, it's massive hardware uh, infrastructure and, and footprint. Um, you know, I myself, you know, bought a lot of things on iTunes, you know, back in the era of the digital download. But, uh, you know, that's not necessarily like doing much to keep me on, on their platform or, or get them to use it. Uh, you know, I think what they're going to be really looking for is this long three-month trial, which is, you know, 
two months longer than most other free trials, which only last usually about a month. And they're going to be, you know, just trying to use that ubiquity of being on, you know, every iPhone that's being sold from now on. Um, you know, it's going to be something that people, uh, you know, ha are able to try and able to try in large numbers. And, and Apple seems to think that that's going to translate into to a good subscriber base. Right. I, do you use Spotify now or what do you use currently? I'm a Spotify person, but I, I don't pay for it. Yeah, and I, I, I use Spotify, um, the free version, the ad-supported version. Um, I also use Pandora, and I, I mean, there's something about me that just really thinks, I mean, I've been using it for five or six years. Like, all, all of those thumbs up and thumbs down, like, they're just lost to me. I don't, I don't, but I probably <laughs> like different music now, too. <laughs> So at WWDC last week, Apple talked about the new news feature in iOS 9 that will replace Newsstand, uh, sort of. It's, it's better than Newsstand. It looks a lot like Flipboard. Uh, but today we're hearing some news that news will be curated by real people. Uh, what have you heard about that? Yeah, so this had people really buzzing today. It was very interesting to see this uh, you know, job posting put out on the Internet. I think Apple has since pulled it down. But it definitely like, you know, um, caught a lot of people's attention. You know, they have this new news platform that they're going to be pushing out. They're going to be encouraging people to use. And, and you, know, you know, content creators like Mashable, the New York Times, or really anywhere else to try to get on there to reach readers. Uh, but, you know, I think maybe some people might have assumed, like, oh, it's going to be entirely uh, algorithm-based. It's going to be machine learning. It's going to figure out what you like and try to show you more of that. What we found out today, uh, you know, through this job posting is that Apple's actually going to be employing some people kind of to... Uh, sort through the news, sort through, uh, you know, the links and, and all the, the features and the think pieces and the hot takes that you see online every day to try to really, uh, you know, put a human touch and, and surface the best stuff out there. Uh, I, I, you know, I think that's a really interesting move by them. It's, it speaks to Apple getting even more into the media space and, and wanting to really make it a, a, a destination for its users that's, that goes a little bit beyond just the usual aggregation. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because you, you really almost always hear it going the other way around, people's jobs being replaced by robots. But now it seems like it's it's the other direction, uh, which I, I wonder how this is scalable. All right. Finally. Yeah, I mean, it's, it'll be really interesting to see how many, how many people they end up having to hire. And I'm sure that that's information that they won't be necessarily publicly discussing. But, uh, you know, you, one would think that uh, if you're doing this on a large scale and you're looking to attract a lot of readers across a, a broad range of topics, you're going to need a, a good amount of editors. But this doesn't sound too different from the way Facebook operates in some ways. Um, they're trending topics, which you might recognize as kind of like being on the top corner, top right corner when you're when you're looking at your Facebook profile. Uh, that is a combination of uh, you know what's trending on Facebook that they can see, you know, just using their their algorithms, just watching their system, but also kind of what their their editors say, like, oh, this is a big news story. This is interesting. This is worthwhile. We should put this in in kind of like that list. Well, it's interesting. I um, One of my first tech jobs in, I think, 1999 was in a company called Look Smart. I'm sure no one remembers it. But it was um, during, you know, the age of the, you know, burgeoning search engine. And their idea was to hire all these liberal arts grads and have us answer people's questions. So it was like the Ask Jeeves with real people. Um, and it was a great, we loved it. It was the, a great job for a liberal arts major when we didn't think we would have any jobs. Uh, but it didn't last that long. <laughs> they, and what, what a lot of what we ended up doing was telling, answering questions like, there's a new website, it's called Google. Have you heard of it? Here's how it works. So I just wonder how long this will last. But you know, it's, that was a long time ago, so. Sure. And and you mentioned the job posting uh, that was on nine to five Mac, but now they pulled it down. What were what? Do you remember any of the things that that they were asking for in the job posting? You know, they were looking people for people who just kind of like a nice wide range of journalism experience. Uh, I think from what I remember, you know, they wanted you know people with journalism undergraduate degrees or journalism master degrees, experience working in newsrooms, uh, and you know a uh, you know an eye for being able to find good quality. Uh, you know, writing, reporting, journalism um, across a range of topics. So it very much did sound like, you know, uh, it looked to me, it reminded me of a, a job posting for any other editor role, um, just one that was a little heavier on recognition of outside talent and, and just being able to uh, do that quickly and consistently on a daily basis. And now, a few weeks ago, Facebook announced their new deals that they would have uh, with news agencies. But that that's going to be just based on their algorithm, right? I mean, have you heard of anyone curating? I know you mentioned the trending topics, but the news that they're going to deliver, that's just still based on the Facebook algorithm, right? 
Sure, I think you're talking about instant articles, which mm -hmm. is which is the when when yeah. So basically, that's when you know uh, an outlet like the New York Times was one of them writes something and it appears natively on Facebook. So if you click on it, it kind of stays within Facebook. Um, that to me so far does look still algorithm driven. Uh, the results we've seen from it so far, as far as like how many people are reading on it, how many people are clicking on it, engaging with it, liking it, anything like that, are very high. I think one report put it at, at about four times the normal level. So. We're seeing that either either readers are really responding or the algorithm is kind of favoring a little bit, trying to put it in front of more people. As far as human um, you know, editing on that, I do believe that there are people at Facebook that the New York Times, BuzzFeed, uh, New York National Geographic are working with to uh, make these uh, instant articles. But as far as uh, them kind of like deciding which ones to surface, I think it's too early because we're just not seeing actually that many instant articles uh, yet. Right. So another Facebook news today, the company launched Moments. It's an app that private, lets you privately sync photos with friends on Android and iOS. Uh, it's available in the U.S. right now. I think the way it's going to work uh, is that you'll have all of your photos and it will use, I think, facial recognition. Do you, I know you've read a little bit about this today. Mm -hmm. How, how's it going to work? Yeah. So, I mean, if you saw Google Photos uh, a week or two ago, uh, very similar concept. It sounds like Facebook is going to be uh, ask you to uh, download this app, and then it will go through your camera roll and organize your pictures based on who's in them, where they're taken, things like that. It, very similar to Google Photos if, if people saw that. I think what Facebook has uh, a big advantage on is not just the facial recognition technology that they've been working on for a while, and that uh, Google's also using a similar type of, but that once they recognize a person in the photograph, they can then compare that to your Facebook and say like, oh, well, you know, your friend Dave, oh, you've got these 15 pictures that you took with him, do you want to share any? And it's going to be, you know, a very seamless way to find old photos that maybe never made it on Facebook and share them with your friends. Um, I mean, pretty ingenious way of using their 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 newer technology and, and the facial recognition and their existing uh, kind of like social network strengths. Yeah, and I think it's also, and I know a lot of people, I've gotten over it by now, but there are a lot of people that just don't like them to be tagged in any photos on Facebook. They just don't like the idea of it. Uh, and so this is more of a private sharing, which I think is probably mm -hmm. speaking to those people who they, they want to see all the pictures of, you know, the wedding they went to last weekend, but they don't want everyone who looks at their page to see them necessarily. So I, I think this is probably for those people also. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I mean, it's interesting to see, uh, you know, that fact that th this lives entirely more or less off of Facebook. You, you can invite people to join it through the Facebook Messenger app, but uh, they can't see the photos, they can't share any photos unless they get this particular app, which, uh, yes, is only, is only you know, available to share photos between you and your friends. So certainly Facebook, you know, kind of take a bit of a step away from its uh, put this out toward everybody, put this out to your whole network thing, and coming up with a little bit of like a one-to-one -one or a one-to-a-few sharing option. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting. The app wasn't available. I don't know if you tried to download it. I tried today just before the show, and it still wasn't available. Have you seen it yet mm. in the App Store? I haven't yet. I haven't looked for it, but I, I do want to give it a shot. It, it it does actually sound like something that would be would be great because even from this this last trip I was on, I have a bunch of photos that I don't really want to upload to Facebook, but I'd love to get to a couple of my friends. If this is the easiest way to do that, that's great. That's that's a great great app for me. Right, and it you know we'll do away with that. We'll take a picture with my camera and take a picture with my camera. Although you know we've been not we shouldn't have been doing that for a long time because this, is, <laughs> this isn't the only way to send photos. True, but I mean, it just sounds like, you know, um, it's funny because it, it's great. You can send photos anywhere, anytime now. It's, it's very easy, but at the same time, if Facebook has figured out a way to make that process even easier, even, even fewer barriers between you and your friends and that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing that, that people want these days. They really want that kind of ease of use, the you know, existing networks built in, and, and you know, uh, Facebook's poised to take, take advantage of a couple of their strengths with this thing. Right, and keep us in Facebook, which is their ultimate goal. Of course. <laughs> well, Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Jason Abraziz is the is an editor at Mashable. Is there anything else you're working on that you can tell us about? Oh, we're working on a ton of stuff here. I mean, a lot of what's going on in the media world right now is very fascinating as far as, you know, once Apple comes out with its platform, we're also seeing Facebook trying to put media on its, its, own, uh, its own site. Um, you know, we, we seem to be in a shift away from this website destination mode into platform destination mode. And then... I mean, that has a lot of ramifications for, for Apple, for Google, but also for, you know, companies like ours, companies like the New York Times and the future of journalism. So as far as any big topics, that's really the one that, that it's, it's pretty riveting to me right now. Well, thanks, Jason. I'm sure we will talk again. Take care. Thanks a lot.
Coming up, Xbox gets backwards compatibility, and one startup founder just promised to pay for all of his employees' children to go to college. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Blue Apron. Someday soon, we will all be able to get our nutrition from a tiny little pill, but until then, we have to cook or get takeout. And when I'm done here, I will tell you that the very last thing I want to do is go to the grocery store. Takeout almost always wins, but not today. Today I got my Blue Apron box. Blue Apron makes cooking delicious meals easy and fun by delivering fresh, ready-to-cook meals right to your door. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron sends you fresh ingredients, perfectly proportioned, with step-by-step -step recipe instructions, including beautifully printed pictures. No trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. Each balanced meal is 500 to 700 calories per serving. Cooking takes half an hour, shipping is free, and the menus are always new. They won't send you the same meal twice. They work around your schedule and dietary preferences, and Blue Apron's experts source only the best seasonal ingredients for incredible meals like seared steaks and mashed potatoes with sautéed radishes and snap peas, and hearty sweet potato broccoli with quinoa salad. You'll cook incredible meals and be blown away by the quality and freshness. Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. Check out this week's menu and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of Tech News Tonight. And here are those more gaming headlines I promised you. Don't throw out all those Xbox 360 games yet. Today, Microsoft announced backwards compatibility for Xbox 360 on the Xbox One. That means your Xbox 360 games will run on the Xbox One, although the company says that it won't be all games right away. The announcement was met with major applause at E3, since this is something gamers have been demanding for quite a while. Now, how well Xbox 360 games will work on the Xbox One remains to be seen. Last week, Bethesda Games released the trailer of the new Fallout 4, and today at E3, we heard a few more details. The official release date is November 10th, and according to The Verge, Fallout 4 will be available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and the PC. There's also an iOS teaser game called Fallout Shelter that Leo showed off on today's episode of iOS Today. And Sony leaked a few announcements today, although you'll have to wait for the big reveal just a little bit longer. The company says 30 games are being developed for Project Morpheus, their VR headset, headset which will cost, quote, several hundred dollars. Sony says Project Morpheus will go on sale early next year, but they made no promises that those 30 games in development would be ready by then. We'll have more Sony news tomorrow, but if you absolutely can't wait, you can tune into the live stream of their press conference on Twitch at 6 p.m. Pacific today, Monday, June 15th. And finally, over the weekend, Quartz posted a story about one CEO who has offered to pay the college tuition for all of his employees' children. Chai Wang, the CEO of Boxed, that's an online shipping wholesaler, shopping wholesaler, he's taking the money for, for this benefit from his own stake in the company. Wang, who also hasn't drawn a salary for the past two years. He says he chose this particular benefit because as a child of immigrant parents, he saw firsthand the importance of education. A box is an app that lets you easily search and shop for bulk items. The company has 100 employees right now, but so far only about a dozen of them are eligible. The first child to receive the benefit will begin college this fall. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.